Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. Coming up this week, we've got new Castelli shorts, some super bling wheels, an airbag jacket, a dress, and some sort of new computer mount people keep making jokes about. Um, plus, our main talking point, we're going to take a look at some of the weirdest and most amazing bikes ever created. First up, let's take a look at last week's poll. So we asked about what you thought was the future of drivetrain technology. So we had the new motion labs, the ceramic speed driven and the classified hub. Receiving 46% of the votes was the ceramic speed. A lot of love for that. A lot of love. 36% classified hub. Mm. And then lagging behind a little bit, 18% of the votes was the new motion um, chain of sprockets. Which one, which one do you think is the biggest innovation? <sighs> I think the biggest innovation, yeah, has to be the ceramic speed driven mm. system. Yeah. But I think classified is going to make the biggest impact at the moment. Mm. But we'll see. We'll Fair see. Anyway. So having recently seen the tricycle and the motorcycle, we thought we'd take a closer look at the motorcycle. Um, we thought we'd take a closer look at human-powered vehicles, sort of the weird and wonderful stuff that's out there. Yeah. We've uh, been scouring the, the tech vaults to look at some of the, the sort of crazier and more innovative and unusual contraptions that are bike based or pedal driven that humankind has created and we're going to start with human powered flying vehicles humans have long dreamed of being able to fly um, i mean the, the the tale of icarus in greek mythology is is testament to that and there have been lots of examples of human powered flying vehicles over the years but we picked out a couple of notable examples starting with this the day dallas 88, which was created by MIT and NASA engineers. This uses a wing to generate its lift, and its propulsion is provided by the pilot who pedals the propeller. A bit of a tongue twister, that. God, I'm surprised I got that out in one go. Well, good mm, work. Thanks. Um, so it's called the Day Dallas because it's named after Day Dallas, who was the father of Icarus, who tried to um, escape from Crete and King Minos by building some wings out of feathers glued together. Hold on, by spoiler wax. alert, you're going to give the story away. Oh yeah, so, sorry about that. Anyway, the original goal of the project was to fly 115 kilometers and replicate the journey taken by Day Dallas and Icarus. But um, in the end, through several innovations and in improving their designs, they actually got to 199 kilometers in 1987. That's mad, isn't it? And this thing just weighed 32 kilograms, which is an incredible feat of engineering at that time. Yeah, isn't it? it is really uh, impressive. The moral of the story is that you shouldn't fly too close to the sun. Anyhow, uh, the project was incredibly useful in generating further understanding in aerodynamics, which was then able to lead to high altitude flying aircraft that we see today. So, yeah, really cool. There's loads of different sort of flying bikes around, or bikes with wings, if you will. But the next one we're going to look at takes a slightly different approach, sort of less obvious approach, isn't it? Mm. It's called the Aerosail. It's basically a blimp that you pedal. It's a creation of a French inventor, the Aerosail. Um, a guy that's incredibly passionate about many sort of weird and wonderful contraptions. Stéphane Rousson is his name, and he made the Aerosail, which he sailed from uh, Corsica across to Nice. Well, I think it was Nice to Corsica. Oh, the anyway, other way around. Same difference. Yeah. Um, and he, well, yeah, in 2008, The Guardian reported um, of how he attempted to cross the English Channel using an Aerosail oh. as well. Um, but unfortunately, he, he didn't quite didn't quite make it. He was inspired to do it by E.T., of all things. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. So his creation was, I think it was about 19 metres long, and it had a volume of 189 metres cubed. So this thing was massive mm. in terms of pushing that through the wind. Well, yeah, and that was, so unfortunately yeah. that's why he didn't succeed in his attempt to cross the English Channel, because he was met with a stiff headwind. Yeah. Which okay. he, I think we can all relate to. We kind of relate yeah. to. Again, this was pedal powered, so it was using his pedaling motion to propel himself forward, and it just hovered only a few metres above the sea level. <laughs> I'd love to have a go in it. I don't know that I want to go. <laughs> Well, that's not the only sail bike. Check this out. I found this on the Online Bicycle Museum, and it's called the 1975 Patterson Aero Cycle Sail Bike. Catchy name, but this yeah. is a bike, but you don't actually pedal this thing. You sail it, don't you? So, yeah. in that sense, you can kind of only really go where you've got a tailwind blowing you. Well, well unless you've got a wide open space and you can sort of like tack across the wind Get into off. the headwind. Yeah, a bit of slow process. But yeah, it's kind of mm. like, a, like a sort of windsurfing bike almost mm. weird but you, but you don't pedal it no no next we've got the the ruger or is it ryuga 
I'm, not, I'm still not sure. Uh, E-bike, which I saw at the Taipei Bike Show a couple of years ago. This thing is absolutely mental. It's st you still pedal it, still pedal assist, yeah. but the, the, the makers told me that the motors on it are 5,000 watt in total. That is ridiculous, isn't it? Of course, yeah. this thing is no doubt limited, so you're limited to a speed of 25 kilometers an hour, as per the highway's regulations, but if you are a hardened criminal, there is always the option of delimiting it. At which point, the makers told me it'll go 200 kilometers per hour. That's oh. insane, isn't it? Yeah. I'll, I'll, take, I'll take one of those for sure. Yeah, well, if you want one, um, I was also told it, it was a one-off and cost $250,000. Oh, well, in that, in that case, we'll have one each, shall we? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Car weekend rides just got a bit quicker. Yeah. Hmm. Right, I've got a fantastic contraption up next for you. Yeah. How about a bike treadmill? What? So, this is made by Loppy Fit, and it's the bike treadmill combo, which is perfect for people that want a, a bike and a treadmill. Is this real? Of course it's real, oh. yeah. So, yeah, in the middle of the bike, you've got a miniature treadmill, and you walk along, and then that effort is then electronically assisted to drive the bike forwards. It's real. Okay. You, 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 you want one really, don't you? So instead of walking, this contraption will increase your walking pace by 400%, which is uh, not to be sniffed at, and completely different to walking. Well, you can freewheel downhill, so you can't do that. And it takes just four hours to charge and has a range of 55 kilometers. Impressive. Mm. Well, sticking with bikes that you don't pedal, how about this? This is the ski bike. Check this out. It's designed to, well, be a, a sort of alternative to a downhill mountain bike for snowy conditions yeah. and it does it does look cool it does look, it does yeah, like it, it would be fun um i think personally i'd probably prefer skiing but mm. it looks like it would be easier to pick up and have fun on than learning to ski or learning to board yeah you're probably right but anyway we want to know which one of these weird and wonderful contraptions you like the best so you can let us know in the comments section down below and also if there's any other things that we missed out, which might be cool to look, it'll be it'd be good if we could get our hands on some of these. Yeah, I mean it? we've only just scratched the surface yeah. of some of the weird, amazing stuff out there. So, yeah, let us know your suggestions of bikes that we should take a look at, and we'll uh, we'll probably will in a future video. Oh, I would love to test out the treadmill bike. <laughs> it's now time for hot tech. Hey, Alex, do you know how people always joke that newsreaders are actually naked from the waist down below the desk? Yeah? Well, I can't speak for newsreaders, maybe they are, but I can speak for GCN presenters and confirm that we're not actually naked below the, below the desk. Oh, God. This, these are the new Castelli Premio black bib shorts. What do you make of these? Oh, Jesus Christ. Cas Castelli reckons these are actually the comfiest bib shorts they've ever made. Castelli is saying that less is more with these shorts. So it used to be kind of like, you know, 10 years ago, what defined a, a, the best shorts was having loads and loads and loads of panels stitched yeah. together. But that's because the fabric technology 10 years ago isn't what it is today. And that they were limited by that, that fabric technology. And the only way that you could get a really optimum fit was to have loads of different panels. But that's not ideal because it creates loads of seams, which are potential points of irritation. Yeah, but technology's moved on a long way since then. So with the sort of technology and the fabrics that we've got now, we can create all of those perfect, like form-fitting shapes in a sort of, not a totally seamless, but in not having to use all of those different panels and have all of those seams everywhere. Mm. So these new shorts that you're very kindly sporting down there, well, uh, they've got super wide straps on them, so they're nice and comfortable. There's a mesh panel on the back to keep, keep the airflow good, keep you cool when you're out on the bike. And they've got a new pad, which, I mean, is it comfy while you sat there? Yeah. Oh, feels good, yeah. yeah. So, uh, and these are gonna be great if the if the weather ever cheers up and it's warm outside. I'd love to love to be able to go out and wear these. Oh, now tell me about it. I mean, even in my wildest dreams, it's it's not even warm and sunny. Yeah, yeah that is true. Um, by the way, I mean, have you checked out our dream ride yet? We had such a great time up in the lake. Oh, yeah. yeah Fantastic yeah. riding. Yeah. I mean, sick drone shots as well. Yeah, that's what I'm referencing with that comment. But yeah, yeah. if you've not seen that video yet, check it out. Lake District is stunning. We had a good time filming it as well. Oh, cool fact on these shorts as well is that because they're made out of this special, very sort of thin black fabric that, uh, well, if, if you can feel it, it feels a bit like paper between mm. your fingers. Castelli reckons that it can't hold anywhere near as much moisture as regular lycra. And so the, the moisture as you sweat evaporates 
quicker because the fabric can't hold it, which cools you down more effectively. And they say a sign that they've seen is that riders using these in hot conditions, which we can only dream about, yeah. often get um, salt marks on them from, we from wearing them, which is pretty cool. Sign a good kit then, isn't it? Yeah. Salt marks all over you. Yeah. Or a very sweaty person. Kind of like a badge of honour salt marks, mm. I think. Up next, we've got some fancy new Kdex 36mm wheels. Kdex, a brand known for its top-end wheels and components, has launched a new carbon wheel set that's 36 millimetres deep. These feature a 22.4 millimetre internal rim width, so super wide as the trend is with mm. modern wheel sets, and they're also hookless as well. Yeah, mm. you may you may remember um, I had the pleasure of using some deeper Kdex wheels when mm. we did our Wales in a Day epic ride last year, and well, they were they were mega. They feature super bling carbon spokes, which are designed to increase stiffness, you know, whenever you're sprinting, climbing, or cornering, and also, well, they keep the weight down. They're laced together with using something that Kdex called dynamic balance lacing, mm. which is said to increase the lateral stiffness of the wheel and the efficiency of it as well. Of course, these also feature ceramic bearings, and the weight of these wheels, 1,302 grams. They're very light for a mm. pair of hookless. Uh, clinches, but um, well, they're ideal if you if you're planning a, a mental Everesting based challenge in the summer. Which um, are you? Yeah. Up next, your old inner tubes could be converted into someone's new dress. Amazing. Now, I obviously love tubeless. I don't know if I've mentioned it before. And it can be better for the environment, particularly if you use a biodegradable sealant. We're all for saving the polar bears here in GCN Tech, oh, aren't yeah. we? Um, but one of the things you need to do if you're not using your inner tubes is, well, you don't just throw them away, do you? Recycling them you is do a bit want, of an issue. Yeah, recycling yeah. them is a bit of an issue. And one of the most obvious uses for your old inner tubes is to um, fashion them into a dress. That's definitely one of the most obvious uses for them. Yes. Which is great because a fashion designer slash artist called mm. Adana Baldassari has created a dress made from used inner tubes and a matching purse as part of her Trash Fashions um, <laughs> exhibit for a, yeah. an art exhibition in America. It kind of it kind of reminds me a little bit of that meat dress that Lady Gaga wore years ago. Mm, well, here's a picture of it. Mm. Ollie, you shall go to the ball. Thanks. Mm. A French company called Urban Circus have launched an inflatable jacket that, you guessed it, if you crash your bike or just fall over, will inflate to try and protect you. Yeah, like a giant human airbag. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the system comprises of a sensor in the jacket and then also another motion sensor that you attach onto your bike. And then should you fall, it's able to trigger the system, which deploys this massive airbag that can protect, according to the makers, your abdomen, your spine, and your neck. The Cirrus jacket will cost 700. And your back. Oh, and that's your back. Was, that's kind of covered off by spine. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> the, thanks. The Cirrus jacket will cost 730 euros. However, they do do a Cirrus light jacket, which is considerably cheaper at 190 euros. Why is the Cirrus light so much cheaper? I'm not too sure. Yeah, quite hmm. a big saving there. Hmm. Um, it does look particularly warm though, especially when it's inflated. It's like a giant puffer jacket. So even when it's not inflated, yeah, I think there's a few limitations here. Mm. Like it, 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 you've, if it was hot outside, you wouldn't necessarily want to wear a big jacket or no. coat. You'd get too hot, wouldn't you? Yeah, there's a bit of a downside. Yeah, it? and then also the fashion and the style. I'm not one to speak about that, but 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 some mm. some people might not like the way. Yeah, it looks. I, you could take my sort of judgment as a bit of a fashion icon like myself. Yeah, mm. I think we can. Yeah. Um, it reminds me a bit of the Hofding um, oh, helmet yeah. that was, yeah, that was like cool. around your neck. It was mm. like a he airbag helmet. Yeah, mm. anyway, let's know what you think about it in the comments. Finally, in hot tech this week, Silka have launched a dead fancy 3D printed titanium out the front mount for your bike computer, and it it, it kind of looks like. Um, um, mm. Uh, what does it look like? I don't know what you want to say. Oh, I got it. I know what it looks like. I know exactly what it looks like. It looks like it was inspired by the Swiss artist H.R. Geiger, known for his artistic direction behind the Aliens franchise. Um, yeah, that's it, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So according to Silka, this is like really, really stiff, this mount. Like the stiffest mount you've ever seen for your bike computer. Mm. And it's $195 and it's made from 3D printed titanium. Cool. Well, I, let's have a hot or not poll on this. Vote on it. Do you think it's hot or do you think it's not? And um, let us know in the comments. More hot tech next week. It's now time for snacks of every other week. Oh yeah, what we got? First up.
God, you haven't put your blue trousers on yet. Neither have you. Oh, yeah, I haven't yet. Right, this week, let me see what we've got. A nice little bow on the front of the box oh. here. Um, presumably, this is a shoe box. Oh, let's have a look what we got. We've got some cookies. Oh, nice. Cookies and um, some blue muffins as well. Blue muffins. So these are um, Giro d'Italia inspired cookies here. So we've got like Yates. Yates in pink. Yates in pink, Quebec Assos. We've got Remco Evenepoel. We've got Albus in Phoenix. Nice. So we've got a good little selection there. Also, got a kind little letter. Address the GCN Mega Base. All right. So interesting thing here, the blue muffins, that's quite cool. So there's actually a study going on at the moment by... Um, Tim. Tim like Spector, that, yeah. professor. Yeah. That is called the Blue Poo Challenge, whereby it's, it's looking at measuring gut transit time because that's linked to, uh, well, essentially, when you boil it down, health. Um, that's what we've got written in the card here yeah, from uh, so Stephen Spokes. A science nerd. That's, yeah, there you go. So you basically eat blue food dye containing muffins or anything else, and then you measure how long it takes to see it the other side. Snacks of the week, everybody! <laughs> I'll, I'll probably just have a cookie. Yeah, okay. Mm, thanks. More snacks, not next week, week after. I'm going to keep the headband on. Um, lots of people seem to like it when you wear your headband. Oh, cool. Um, so I'll keep it on. But it's now time for screw riding upgrades by upgrades. Mm. Where you submit, I'm eating snacks. Where uh, you submit upgrades you've made to your bikes, equipment, or cycling lives, the chance to win the ultimate prize, GCM water bottle. Um, if you remember last week, we had Sachin Designs Fuji Red Wrap bike up against Eckhart's. Uh, Macintosh or Macintosh steel restoration. Mm. So receiving 56% of the votes was the steel restoration bike. Mm. Uh, on to this week, we have first Dazza K576. 57. Um, yeah, and yeah. he did um, his first time trial and then uh, recently and decided he wanted to build a bike. So he got a 2020 Scott Addict RC20. Um, and it had a bit of damage on it, so he got it really cheap, but he's repaired it and he's converted it into one buy and he's stick, put on some nice zip, uh, zip VUCA bars on there and, and, and data clip-ons and an XTR DI2 rear mech because that's perfect for one buy. So he's, I mean, he's done a, a proper job on this. Like A lot of work on this. Great to see some carbon bike repair done as well. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, so he's got a bit of a mix here of um, mountain bike and road bike DI2 components. Yeah, well they are compatible. Yeah, so because he's running uh, yeah. a one by setup, he's gone for an XTR rear mech, which is quite a cool idea, isn't it? Yeah, for the one by, yeah. yeah, because of the, like, the sort of clutch technology. And also, it. if you can see on one of the pictures, he's using the um, like the climbing like sprint type buttons on the mm. front of his TT extensions, which is like, a really cool idea, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's great. Um, but as you would say every week, it's not going to be plain sailing. It is, it's not. I saw you just catch a little glimpse of my bow there. Um, <laughs> so they're up against Scooby JL, with, um, who says they always wanted to try vinyl wrap in their bike and finally got to do it, do it during the lockdown. So yeah, we had a vinyl wrap bike last week, which I kind of really liked. So I thought I'd have one in this week. Um, what do you make of this? This is his giant um, propel, is it? Yeah. Is it a giant propel? Mm. Hmm. So they're, they're just wrapping it to change the colour. They're not doing a full wrap because this bike has only got that coloured section on a couple of bits of the frame. So they've obviously painstakingly got the vinyl cut around that. Yeah, um, to change I, think that's really cool cool, I think that's a really cool idea of yeah. the idea of just doing a, a little bit of wrapping in a few tactical areas. Could be a great way to go yeah. to, to use wrapping. Hmm. But I think with cars, I like, I like it sometimes when you see cars and they're wrapped, they, look, they can look great. Yeah. Sometimes they look a bit rubbish, but... Yeah. I think, yeah, done tastefully, it can be a brilliant Well, the way. good thing about vinyl wrap is that well, if you get bored or you don't like it or you decide you've done a bit of a rubbish job, you just warm it up and peel it off. And, in the meantime, it acts as like a paint protection film. Mm. Fantastic. Yeah, cool. Uh, but it's not down to us, is it? So it's down to the viewers. So head over to the GCN app and vote for which upgrade, well, gets your vote. On to this week's Bike Vault, where you upload pictures of your bike and then we judge them to either be nice or super nice. And if they're super nice, well, I ring the bell. Yeah. Oh, wrong one. So that's my water bowl. There we go. Yeah, and then they get committed to the Bike Vault for eternity and you can submit your bikes using the GCN app and vote on the bikes we feature as well uh, in the app. So without further ado, first of all this week we've got Enjoying Life. That's a nice name, isn't that's it? a good, nice name, yeah. Um, he submitted his... Canyon, Canyon In-Flight CF SLX, 
as she's been bombing around on the trails. I mean, that's a... Ah, oh, cool colour. A nice yeah. sort of vibrant pink on there. I'm, I'm, I'm digging that. I'm digging the And colour. the Reynolds wheels lined up. That's a super nice, isn't it? Yeah, saddle's very funny angle, but I'm, I'm having a super nice. That's good. Who's next, next up, we've got a Glanesy. <laughs> Go with it. Yeah, Go with I'm, it. I'm not really own good it. at names. Own it. Yeah, I, mean, I didn't own it. Um, so they've got their. What is this bike? I can't even see it. Custom lugged Columbus steel frame. 2020, it says. Oh, yeah, there you go. A great photo of it on the pier. Yeah. They've. They have I a mean, retro Mosman combo. Super nice. Yeah, super, super nice. nice. Super nice. They know what they're doing. Next, we've got a specialised diverge from Cyclist Zombie, or Cycle Zombie. Um, what do you make of that? Oh, not so sure on the. Um... Weird, kind of like full. He's like turned it into a. TT bike. I think he's going endurance riding yeah, on that. I'm not so sure on the sort of TT bars and the accessories on that. Well, that's bike. why he's moved his saddle forwards. He's, mm. he's definitely, he's, it's like a conversion. It's, he's going long distance. I'm going to say, for me, it is a nice bike, but it's, right, it's well, not going to be super nice. That's nice. Nope, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, next um, up, Peter Flagstaff ooh. with his Canyon Air Road CF SLX. Nice. The, no, small, biggies, smally bigs. No. Oh, he's yeah. done everything nope. right apart from, no. Sorry. Nope, sorry, can't have that. Um, and lastly this week, we've got this really interesting one. So this is, check out this one. This is from Lynn Radmel, mm. and they've submitted this rather incredible looking oh, bike, whoa. which I can tell you is a Razic Vortex. That is nuts. Yeah, these, these came out, I think, about six years ago. But what do you make of that? I mean, it's like a, it's like a bike, a scaffolding bike. It's like a lattice structure, isn't it? Yeah. They're, so they're, they're actually, well, yeah, they're interesting bikes, these. They're, um... 850 grams for the for the frame, so quite light, light yeah. but also really, really stiff. But I mean, uh, I it, mean, as good as good as the uh, functionality of it is, the cranks aren't aligned the right way. It's not in the big chainring, and it's not in uh, the you know the correct sprocket on the back. Yeah, and you do have to pedal with what is effectively a cheese grater between your legs. Yeah, it's just nice. going to be a nice, I'm afraid. Yeah, that's it. Sorry, we'll buy more next week. No, I'm not apologising. No. No. I'm sorry. Never, never apologize. Yeah. Well, I say it every week, but that is unfortunately all we've got time for on the Bike Vault, and that rounds off the GCN Tech Show. Yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. As ever, if you want to support the channel and what we do, then subscribe. It really does help, and if you haven't already, and uh, give this video a thumbs up. And if you'd like something else to watch, check out the Campagnolo Dream Ride if you've not seen it already. Wait, see the scenery. Bloody nice. It's very cool, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs>